morning everybody today's topic is development of git so here topic is development of uh, mid gut derivative uh, uh, rotation so what is the rotation of this gut so here i will complete the competency based congenital anomalies of this mid gut so mid gut derivative already you learned the fore gut and mid gut now introduction first folding of this embryo during this folding there is a head folding and here this one at the tail folding so in between there is connecting there is a yolk sac and there is a formation of this primitive gut so head head fold there is a fore gut this one at the mid gut and this one at the tail fold here there is a hind gut derivative development of this hind gut so this one at this initial uh, uh, folding of this embryo so head fold and fold so the primitive gut it connected with this uh, vitellin artery through the vitellin artery at the uh, mid gut derivative with yolk sac and fore gut uh, it in is innervated by this branches of this uh, aorta name is given in celiac trunk mid gut derivative it supply this branches of this primitive uh, aorta name is given the supramesenteric artery and hind gut derivative it innervate the or it supply by this branches of this inferior mesenteric artery so this one at this part of this primitive gut Tube. So you, you can see this primitive gut, gut tube anteriorly it is connected with this bucopharyngeal membrane. Posteriorly it is connected with this cloacal membrane. Then this membrane is ruptured and exterior it is open the oral cavity. So this one are the primitive pharynx. Here there is a development of this esophagus, stomach, and second part of this up to the second part of this duodenum. So this part are the derivative of this foregut. In between this foregut and midgut there is a Uh, potential opening name is in the anterior intestinal portal and midgut derivative it connected with this anteriorly with the yolk sac and here there is a midgut derivative mainly it is derived from this second part of this duodenum uh, from the opening of this um, uh, go, uh, pa, pa, opening of this duct and below there is a uh, duodenum jejunum and ileum this part are the derivative of this midgut derivative so particularly midgut there is a jejunum ileum cecum and appendix and part of this is ascending colon so development of this um, two arterial arcade uh, the, this are the derived from this midgut on hind gut development there is a rest part of this uh, uh, transverse colon descending colon and rectum and anal canal so this one are the derivative of this in short fore gut derivative development of this oral cavity pharynx these are the pharyngeal gut this one are the esophagus stomach and duodenum up to the second part here there is opening of this bile duct this one are the liver and pancreas this one are the fore gut derivative the mid gut derivative from the second part of the duodenum to the jejunum and ileum ascending colon right to third of this transverse colon up to here so these are the derived from this mid gut and it supply by this supramesenteric artery for gut derivative supply by this celiac trunk now hind gut is derived from this half of this transverse colon descending colon rectum anal canal and sigmoid colon these are the derivative of this hind gut it supply by this branches of this inferior mesenteric artery now you can see this for gut pre laryngeal and the post laryngeal part So already you learned this derivative of this fore gut. How stomach is rotated. How oh, esophagus is uh, is derived. Uh, development of this esophagus. So inner tube there is a development of this pre laryngeal and the post laryngeal part. And esophagus and stomach are developed. Now mid gut it extends mesentery and communication. So this portion are the mid gut derivative. So mid gut development the mid gut uh, elongate the, from the U shape uh, intestinal loop. that is suspended from the posterior abdominal fold by short mesentery anteriorly communicate with this yolk sac by the narrow vitello intestinal duct so this one are this narrow vitello intestinal duct the superior mesenteric artery runs in this middle of the mid gut loop and divide it into the pre arterial or the cranial and the post arterial or the caudal segment so here you can see this superior mesenteric artery it further divide into this pre arterial part and post arterial part renal and caudal segment of this mid gut loops so jejunum and ileum is derived from this mid gut loop so this mid gut loop is further divided into this pre arterial and post arterial part so it supply the vessels branches of the supramesenteric artery 
primitive intestine and loop first pre arterial it is cranial part and post arterial this one at the caudal part so pre arterial is say second from second part of the duodenum third and fourth part jejunum and ileum is derived then cecum ascending colon uh, transverse colon and half of this transverse colon and descending colon it derive from this uh, post arterial segment so cranial at the pre arterial and post arterial name is given this caudal segment Jejunum and ileum. Most of this ileum are derived from this pre-arterial segment of this mid-gut book. In terminal portion of this ileum, derived from this post-arterial segment proximal to the cecal bud. So this one are the pre-arterial segment. In the post-arterial post-arterial part, the cecal bud is the verticulum that arises from this post-arterial segment of this mid-gut book. The cecum and appendix are formed by this. Enlargement of this bud. The proximal part of this bud grow rapidly to form the cecum. Its distal, its distal part remain the narrow, and from the appendix. During this greater part of this fetal life, the appendix arise from this apex of this cecum. Subsequently, the lateral wall of this cecum grow much more, much more rapidly. So this one at this development of this post arterial segment. The uh, ascending colon is developed from this post arterial segment of this midgut loop, the distal to the cecal bud, and and this one are the hindgut derivative. So hindgut derivative supply the inferior mesenteric artery. I will take the later hindgut derivative. Now the two segment of this midgut, this one are the cranial limb of this midgut, this one are the caudal limb of this uh, limb of this midgut loop. So here there is a cecal swelling. So these are the pre arterial and the post arterial. So derivative of this uh, lower part of this duodenum, jejunum, and most of this ileum, ileum derived from this cranial limb of this midgut loop. And terminal part of this ileum, cecum, appendix, ascending colon, transverse colon, and descending colon derived from this caudal limb of this midgut loop. Now cecal diverticulum in the vitelloid intestinal duct. So what is the cecum diverticulum? So this part uh, at the there is extension of this cecum name is given this diverticulum or also name is given this vitello intestinal duct so some part name is given this cecum diverticulum and vitello intestinal duct now superior uh, superior retention bend suspensory muscles of the duodenum ligament of this trees so this ligament of the trees attaches with this duodenum to form a Suspensory muscles of this duodenum. Inferior retention bend phrenicopolic ligament. So inferiorly there is a retention bend. This name is given the phrenicopolic ligament. This one are the phrenicopolic ligament. It attaches the inferior. Now you see this uh, uh, rotation of this gut after the rotation. So its normal adult position is occur. So I will take the, the rotation of this gut before we will. Discuss about the physiological umbilical hernia. You see this. What is the physiological umbilical hernia? You see in this diagram, the during this third week of this development, the pre-arterial segment of the midgut elongate rapidly. There is rapid growth of the liver during during this period because of this rapid elongation of this midgut loop. A rapid growth of the liver and the developing mesonephric kidney. The abdominal cavity become too small to accommodate all the intestinal loop. The midgut loop enters the extra uh, extra embryonic coelom cavity in this umbilical cord. During the six weeks of this development, this herniation of the intestinal loop is called the physiological umbilical hernia. So here you see this midgut loop. This one part of this umbilical. So at the six weeks of this gestation, it will come anteriorly. Eight week gestation, it come down. And this nine with gestation further it come down. Then there is a after first stage and second stage of this physiological hernia. So this one are the physiological hernia. The herniation of the intestinal loop is called the physiological hernia. Now how it reduction? So which are the factor for causing the physiological hernia? First rapid growth, large size of this liver, which occupy a large area of the abdominal cavity. Second, there is a small size of this abdominal cavity because the lumbar segment is not at form. Third one, midgut is growing at a at a at a fast space. So this one are the cause factor causing the physiological hernia.
now here there is a three stage for first stage second stage and third stage so physiological hernia is the first stage during this third week of this embryo so this one at the sixth week this one at the fifth week ninth uh, ninth week and the eleventh week and twelfth week so at this third week of this development the pre-arterial segment of the mid gut elongate rapidly there is rapid growth of this liver during this period because the rapid elongation of this mid gut from from the rapid growth of the liver and the developing mesonephric kidney the abdominal cavity become too small to accommodate all the intestinal loop the mid gut loop enter the extra embryonic coelom cavity in this umbilical cord during the six week the development this herniation of the intestinal loop is called the physiological hernia so these are the extension of this herniation of this loop name is given the physiological hernia now how it is reduced so reduction of this physiological umbilical hernia during the 10th week so here there is a 11 to 10th 12th week the 9th week ma and after the uh, during the 10th week of this development the herniated mid gut loop begins to return to the abdominal cavity the contributing the contributing factor for the return of the mid gut loop are the reduction in size of the developing liver regression of this mesonephric kidney with associated expansion of this abdominal cavity so name is given this reduction of this physiological hernia then there is a rotation of this gut so rotation of this gut i will take the first stage of this rotation so what happened the rotation of this gut after its formation of this mid gut loop lies outside the abdominal cavity of the embryo in a part of this extra embryonic coelom this one at the mid gut loop this one at the umbilical portion this pre arterial segment post arterial segment this one at the superior mesenteric vessels so you can see this rotate around this superior mesenteric vessels from the pre arterial to post arterial segment so after the formation of this mid gut loop lies outside the abdominal cavity of the embryo in a part of this extra embryonic coelom this persists near the umbilical loop uh, there has a uh, pre arterial or the proximal segment and the post arterial or the distal segment along with this growth in length the mid gut loop rotate around the axis of the superior mesenteric artery so you see this arrow is indicate the rotation of this loop so when view the mid gut loop from this ventral aspect it make a rotation to 70 in in clock counter clockwise uh, di direction around the axis of the superior mesenteric artery during rotation elongation of this intestinal loop and the coiling of this jejunum and the ilium also take place large intestine also so the elongation but without uh, coiling coiling the total rotation of this mid gut can be divided into the three stages of 90 degree first 90 degree rotation occur during this herniation and remaining 180 during this return of this intestinal loop into the abdominal cavity so the first stage rotation initially the loop lies in the sagittal plane outside the umbilical right umbilical rings its proximal segment is cranial and the ventral to the distal segment so the mid gut loop now undergoes rotation this rotation play a very important part in the establishing the definitive relationship of this various part of this intestine the step in rotation must therefore be clearly understood view from this ventral side loop undergo anti clockwise rotation by 90 with the result that is now lies in the horizontal plane uh, the pre arterial segment come to lie on the right side in the post arterial segment on the left of the supreme mesenteric artery which form the axis so these are the first stage of this rotation here you can see this cranial limb and caudal limb so cranial limb come downward and caudal limb come upward so this one are the first stage rotation now second stage. so here you can see, see this 90 degree anti clockwise rotation so these are the occur on this supreme mesenteric artery pre arterial segment post arterial segment first 90 degree rotation so pre arterial segment come down and post arterial segment come up now normal first rotation at the 90 degree so after the rotation of this first stage of this rotation second stage of this rotation 
the pre arterial segment now undergo great increase so here there is a loop of the pre arterial segment and rotation so this stage are the second stage of this rotation so the pre arterial segment now undergoes great increase in length to form the coil of this jejunum and ilium this loop still lies outside this abdominal cavity to the right side of this distal distal limb you see this diagram during this 10th week the herniated intestinal loop return to the abdominal cavity the reason for the return of this loop are the regression of this mesonephric kidney reduce the growth of this liver expansion of this abdominal cavity coil of this jejunum and ilium preterior segment now return to the abdominal cavity as they do so the midgut loop undergoes a further anti clockwise rotation of the 90 now second 90 degree rotation so right and left side hua a pre cranial and caudal loop hua so as a result the coil of this jejunum and ilium pass behind the superior mesenteric artery into the left half of this abdominal cavity the duodenum therefore comes to lie behind the artery and the coils of the jejunum and the ilium occupy the posterior and the left part of this abdominal cavity so this one are the second stage of this rotation now what what happened at the third stage of this rotation so rotation of the third stage retraction of this herniated loop the pre post arterial segment of this midgut loop return to the abdominal cavity as it does so it also rotate the anti clockwise direction of the 90 degree with this result the transverse colon lies anterior to the superior mesenteric artery here you can see this part are the transverse colon it lies anterior to the superior mesenteric artery and the cecum come to lie on the right side at this stage re revise re, re, reading the rotation of this gut uh, for the understanding the orientation of this various part of this gut at this stage the cecum lies just below the liver and an ascending colon cannot be de demarcated uh, gradually the cecum descend to the iliac fossa and ascending transverse and the descending part of this colon become the distinct so this one are this third stage of rotation now post arterial segment after uh, this one are this caudal uh, right and left side the pre arterial segment this one are the post arterial segment so fixation of this gut at the first all the part of this small and the large intestine have a mesentery by which they are the suspended from this posterior abdominal wall after the completion of the rotation of this gut the duodenum and the ascending colon descending colon and the rectum become the retroperitoneal by the fusion of this mesentery with this posterior abdominal wall uh, the original mesentery persists as a mesentery of this small intestine the transverse mesocolon and the pelvic mesocolon so this one are the complete rotation of this gut so normal first rotation 90 o'clock position here there is a reverse second rotation 180 degree and this one are the after the third rotation so total 280 degree uh, rotation is occur 270 degree so here there is a complete the rotation of this gut so this slide is also tell you the uh, rotation of this physiological hernia then this here there is a first stage of this rotation cecum but goes upward and downward there is a small intestine after the rotation cecal but is goes on the upper and the below there is a jejunum and ilium now there is a descending of this cecum in and its normal adult position cecal but in this uh, inter, uh, in this appendix is come downward so this one are the normal rotation this gut now which are the factor causing the reduction of this physiological hernia liver occupy relatively less space it hemopoietic function is over abdominal cavity is large now as the lumbar segment is formed contraction of this some fibromuscular band in this mesenteric help in reduction of this herniated loop contraction of this longitudinal muscles of this midgut may also be some help in reduction now third stage or the adult position so ascending colon and cecal but goes downward at the right iliac fossa so here there is a complete the position of the rotation of this gut and mesentery fixation 
so fixation of this skirt name is given this mesentery so this uh, three original mesentery persist as a mesentery of this small intestine in transverse mesocolon and the pelvic mesocolon so here you can see this uh, pre arterial segment this part are the jejunum ilium this part are the cecum and here there is attachment of this mesentery so due to this uh, mesentery first all part of this small and large intestine have a mesentery by which they are the suspended from this posterior abdominal wall after the completion of this rotation of the gut the duodenum and ascending colon descending colon and the rectum become the retroperitoneal by the fusion of their mesentery with this posterior abdominal wall uh, the original mesentery persists as the mesentery of this small intestine the transverse mesocolon and the pelvic mesocolon so here there is a summary so dual development of this duodenum because the duodenum is derived from this foregut and half of this duodenum derived from this midgut so it supply by this branches of this celiac tongue the branches of this supreme mesentery vessels jejunum and ileum from the cranial limb of the loop and ileum to the transverse colon caudal limb of this uh, limb of this uh, pre post arterial segment so these are the development of this midgut derivative transverse colon also it supply the dual because it's half of this transverse colon develop from this midgut and later half uh, transverse colon derive from this hindgut so midgut jo derivative hai usko supply karti hai supreme mesenteric artery and hindgut se se jo derive hota hai transverse colon ka part wo supply karti hai branches of the inferior mesenteric artery so it has also there is a dual cecum and appendix there is a different development of this cecum and appendix so normal appendix is derived from this uh, cecal from the cecal bread so there is a diverticulum to form a cecum and there is a development of this appendix so cecum and appendix uh, is uh, developed from the cecal bread so is a diverticulum that arise from this post arterial segment of this midgut the cecum and appendix are formed by this enlargement of this bud the proximal part of this bud grow rapidly Uh, to form a cecum and the distal part remain the narrow and is form the appendix during this greater part of this fetal life the appendix arise from this apex of this cecum subsequently the lateral uh, wall of this cecum grow much more rapidly uh, rapidly than the medial medial wall with this uh, result the point of this attachment of the appendix come to lie on the medial side so this one are uh, this development of this appendix second this one are the fetal type type 1 or the conical this one are this infantile type or quadrate type 2 this one are the normal position of this appendix this one the ileocecal orific and appendicular orific arise from the cecal but type 3 right cecal pouch exaggerated type of this type 4 both orific is come together ileocecal junction and this appendicular orific now applied anatomy so applied anatomy is related with this derivative of this midgut so which are the clinical correlation along this midgut derivative so first anomalies of this vitello intestinal duct so vitello intestinal duct umbilical fecal fistula ex exterior cytoma raspberry tumor iliac diverticulum and meckers diverticulum so these are anomalies come with this derivative of this midgut derivative so vitello intestinal duct it is the congenital anomalies of this uh, midgut derivative so what is the vitello intestinal duct or the anomalies so vitello intestinal duct normally disappear or the meckers diverticulum is a small persistent part of this vitello intestinal duct it is seen along the anti mesenteric border of this ileum it is seen in two person of this people Two feet from the ileocecal junction and the two centimeter in length. So persistence of the vitello intestinal duct is called the Meckel's diverticulum or the diverticulum ileal. It is the surgical importance as it may undergo inflammation, giving rise to the symptoms similar to those of this appendicitis. So Meckel's diverticulum is also of this interested a as the pancreatic tissue or the gastric type of this mucosa. may be present in the wall in the such case ulceration of this perforated can occur in this diverticulum 
So these are the two anomalies, Michel's diverticulum and the vitello intestinal duct. Here you can see this. This one are this vitello intestinal duct. It persists after it is persistence of this duct. Name is given this. Now second, Michel's diverticulum. So Michel's diverticulum, it is the part of this uh, small intestine. It also uh, also of this interested or the pancreatic tissue or the gastric type of this mucosa may be present in the wall of this such case. Ulceration and the perforation can occur in this diverticulum. This clinical condition name is given this Michel's diverticulum. Now enterocyte, enterocytoma. So here you can see this some um, there is a just like present the cyst name is given this enterocyte. So this one at this uh, another congenital anomalies of this uh, error of this uh, development of this small intestine. The raspberry tumor, it is the further, there is a growth of this tumor like a, at the midgut derivative name is given this raspberry tumor. So these are the abnormal development uh, of this midgut and the name is given this raspberry tumor. So tumor like diverticulum. Uh, near the umbilical region. This clinical condition name is given the raspberry tumor. So these are the another anomalies related to this uh, development of this midgut. Exothelmus here there is a failure to reduction of this physiological hernia. It may lead to herniation, in, herniation of this abdominal viscera outside the abdominal cavity. So this abdominal viscera herniate into the base of this umbilicals. This clinical condition name is given the omphalocele or this exomthalos. Here is failure to reduction of this hernia. So rupture of this exomthalos there may be outside this development of this small intestine loop. This clinical condition there is a ruptured exomthalos. Now cecum anomalies of the shape either it is conical quadrate hyperposition of this appendix error of this rotation so these are the mental defect of this so if there is a non rotation or the error of this rotation due to the dilated umbilical rings there may be some anomalies you see this mal rotation or the non rotation uh, some uh, first stage or second stage or the third stage of this rotation is failure it may lead to this right side there is a small intestine and left side there is a large intestine and medially there is a development of this cecum and appendix. These are the error of this rotation. Now reverse rotation sometimes you see this superior mesenteric artery compress the transverse colon and it may lead to this reverse rotation. Anterior lip the duodenal part it close lies anteriorly and behind there is a transverse colon. Uh, these are the reverse rotation. Cecum enter the first, enter the fist. So this clinical condition may lead to this reverse rotation. This small intestine part ka jo duodenum or chichum part hai, wo anteriorly loop ho jayega. So these are the reverse rotation. Now anomalies of the position of this cecum. Normal cecum is lies on this right hypochondria uh, like iliac fossa. Sometimes there is a it cannot fail to descend down to yape would step up if there is a half descent over to yape this one are the normal position of the development of this cecum so anomalies of the position of this cecum it also the upper there is a if the cecum cannot descend down so this one are the developmental defect subhepatic right lumbar or pelvic this one are the subhepatic right lumbar and the pelvic part so, so these are the developmental position anomalies of position of the cecum. Persistent of the second uh, mesentery of the ascending descending colon and duodenum. There may be sometime persistence, so it may not the retroperitoneal. It may attach with this peritoneal cavity. So this one are the some anomalies defect of the mesentery. Persistence of this mesentery of ascending descending colon and duodenum. The volvulus. Here there is a volvulus of the large intestine. It may lead to this obstruction of this the physiological hernia. Yeah. So this clinical, uh, clinical condition name is given this volvulus. Thank you. Here there is a complete the class of this with anomalies of this mid-grade derivative rotation.
थैंक यू